did end up in the first Madonna and Child by the great Renaissance artist Raphael coming into this country right here in Baltimore. We're celebrating this 80th anniversary of the opening of the museum as a public institution in 1934 through this installation, Ride of Raphael, and we're celebrating what was truly an extraordinary gift to the city of that Walters family. This dramatic new installation, which is in our collection galleries, is the first installation in over a decade of our permanent collection. It is the first step of enlivening the presentation of the collection, which was magnificently re reinstalled in the early part of the 2000s. Today, you can see over 200 works, many of which have not ever been on view, that were selected to tell the story of Henry Walters and his father, William, through the art objects that they collected. I really encourage you to come to see and bring your families to come to see what is a behind the scenes look at their personalities and their tastes through their objects. You can discover their own excitement in finding a world beyond the US world of art that they began collecting through their French paintings and decorative arts that they bought in the 1860s. You can discover that they too discovered the world through the World's Fair through which they ended up collecting amazing, they were among the first collectors to, to amass a collection of Asian art. And the most glittering of their tri triumphs was the um, discovery of the world of Fabergé and the diamonds and gold that they brought to this country as part of their collection of Fabergé that was made possible by their travels. And I want you to know that here in Baltimore at the Walters, we have two of no the total known 50 of the Imperial Fabergé eggs, and they're right there in Charles Street, and they're on view. So we hope that all of the stories that we tell in this great installation will help school children, help adults, helps every citizen of Baltimore to understand how great art can in fact be a pillar of the, a great city. We're, we are telling this story through programs, um, book signings, family festivals, and I'll just say that 1,300 family, 1300 family members came through our doors on Saturday. To, see, to take part in creative workshops and to understand better the Walters story. We have interactive experiences. At the end of the installation, you too can write what your favorite memory of the Walters is. And then on the other wall, you can tell us what you would like the Walters to be in the future. And in fact, we invite you to tweet your favorite memories of the Walters on your Twitter account. Mine is really boring, don't go there. Um, and finally, we have, we're launching in January a mobile website with stories about the Walters family, stories about the people involved in the, in the beginnings of our collection, stories about collecting itself, and menus that the Walters family enjoyed, so even food. But in closing, it truly is my great privilege to thank every Baltimore citizen who proverbially pulled the lever last Tuesday in favor of question E. In so doing, you secured $400,000 in bond funds so that the Walters can complete crucial capital updates to its infrastructure and gallery spaces. These changes and these cha updates will allow you and your children to have the best, most exciting, most comfortable and most up-to-date experience in our museum, in your museum. Thanks to you, we will continue to care for the buildings and the objects that were given as a result of that death in November 1931 to the mayor and the city council of Baltimore in Henry Walters' words, quote, for the benefit of the public. Thank you. Thank you. Julia, thank you for the great work you're doing down at the Walters. We really appreciate how you reach out to the schools and make sure that our kids are able to come to the Walters. So again, thank you for a great job. Um, we will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of the proceedings from the October 27th City Council meeting is on the council member's desk. Is there a motion to approve the journal? Motion by Councilman Scott, second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of adopting the journal say aye. Those opposed, nay. The most encouraged the journal is adopted. Bills signed by the mayor can be found on page two of the agenda. Bills will be introduced. 
City Council Bill 14-450, City Streets Closing a Portion of Creek Alley, Ordinance for the Purpose of Condemning and Closing a Portion of Creek Alley, Extending from West West Street Northeasterly 330 Feet, More or Less to West Cross Street, as shown on Plat 257A35A in the Office of the Department of General Services and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Housing and Community Development Committee. City Council Bill 14-451, Sale of Property, Former Bed of Creek Alley, Ordinance for the Purpose of Authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to sell at either public or private sale all its interests in a certain parcel of land known as the Former Bed of Creek Alley, extending from West West Street <coughs> northeasterly 335, 330 feet, more or less, to West Cross Street and no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 14 452, Sale of Property, 17, 19, and 23 South Gay Street. Ordinance for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to sell at either public or private sale all its interests in certain properties known as 17, 19, and 23 South Gay Street consisting of approximately 0.3 acres and no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 14-453, Baltimore City Landmark List, Olmstead Parkways, Ordinance for the Purpose of Designating the Olmstead Parkway, which consists of the public right-of-way of the 2600 to 3200 block of the Alameda, Pu the public right-of-way of 0 through 1800 blocks of 33rd Street and the public right-of-way of the 1600 to 3900 blocks of the Gwynn Falls Parkway as a historical landmark. Sponsor Clark, Mosby, Kraft, Costello, Scott, Stokes, Henry, and Welsh. Please note that uh, Councilman Kern is the co-sponsor, Council President Young is the co-sponsor, Chair recognized Councilwoman Clark. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. Um, this is truly east to west and west to east. Um, a partnership uh, between myself and the councilman from the 7th District um, because the Olmstead Parkways are from east to west, from west to east. So the median strips, we call them now, that run down the middle of the boulevards from <coughs> Clifton Park up the Alameda across 33rd Street, and then pick up on the west side of Drude Hill Park and run along the Gwynn's Falls Parkway all the way to Leakin Park. That's all part of the Olmstead Parkways here in Baltimore City. And we have partnered to make sure their history is appreciated and preserved. So we appreciate this council's support Thank you for, um, and my thanks to my partner for um, this partnership in preserving our heritage. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Urban Affair and Aging Committee. You can find the consent calendar in Section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion by Councilman Henry, second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye. Those opposed, nay. The most occurred, this calendar is approved. We'll now move the bills on second reader, Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. <coughs> City Council Bill 14-371, Electronic Smoking Devices, Ordinance for the Purpose of Extending the Laws that Prohibit Smoking in Certain Places, Prohibit the Distribution of Tobacco Products to Minors, and Regulate the Display, Storage, and Placement of Tobacco Products to Apply to Electronic Smoking Devices, Defining Certain Terms, Conforming Certain Language, and generally Relating to the Sale, Distribution, and Use of Electronic Smoking Devices. Chair recognizes Council McCraft. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we heard this bill on October the 7th of this year. We had a lengthy hearing, uh, hearing from people who have used electronic um, cigarettes and use uh, people from the health department, from the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, <laughs> and other advocates both for uh, treating e-cigarettes the same as regular cigarettes and those asking to treat them differently. Um, this bill would treat them the same as any other uh, smoking under the Indoor Clean <coughs> Air Act, uh, with an exception of an amendment which I'll address momentarily. Uh, E-cigarettes uh, are being 
regulated across the country. Uh, in the state of Maryland, they are not allowed to be sold to minors. Uh, there is not a lot of um, evidence right now in terms of overall evidence as to their effect on people. There is anecdotal evidence with regard to their usage. Um, they are not advertised as cessation devices. There are some studies, but not formal clinical trials that compare them to uh, patches and to gum. But, uh, but overall, they have not been put into formal testing as is generally required under the FDA. The most interesting thing, though, is that advertising has just started to address them, and this is the most recent advertising uh, that, that we found, and this <coughs> is in um, a recent um, edition of Vogue um, magazine, advertising for the Mark 10 e-cigarette, um, which they have put up uh, the thing that's are referred to as tombstone ads. Um, and this is on an e-cigarette. This product is not intended for use by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding, or persons with or at risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, or taking medicine for depression or asthma. Nicotine is addictive and habit-forming, and it is very toxic by inhalation. Nicotine can increase your heart rate and blood pressure and cause dizziness, nausea, and stomach pain. Inhalation of this product may aggravate existing <coughs> respiratory conditions. Um, this is one of the main reasons we want this to be regulated by the Indoor Clean Air Act. Now, Mr. President, we did hear from a number of folks who said, well, this, these aren't um, smoking, it isn't regular smoking, and we believe that restaurants, bars, and taverns should have the right to be able to allow smoking in their facilities if they want to allow them to do that. So initially they said, why don't we just let any restaurant or bar or tavern have smoking, and if you don't want to do it, put up a sign saying you can't do it. Um, committee said, no, that's, that's not right. If you want it to say, if you want to do it in your place, you can do it, then we'll put up a sign and say, it is allowed here, and you can put it on your menu. Um, that is what the exceptions are. Uh, they are on the member's desk in an amendment. Uh, I would move the amendment at this time. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of approving the amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. nay. Most, please note that Councilwoman Holton is a nay and Councilman uh, Scott is a nay. The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognized Councilman Kraft. Mr. President, move the bill favorably as amended. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Nay. Please note Councilwoman Holton is a nay. Um, you want to speak? Chair recognizes Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I remember several years ago when two of my colleagues uh, rather aggressively led a charge to have Baltimore be smoke free in public places, which led to the state of Maryland becoming smoke free. And it was, a, a, it, it was an, an impelling argument that caused Maryland to be smoke free. My colleague from the first district reading from a tombstone ad that sounds like something you'd read on the side of a pack of cigarettes. If we're smoke free, are we truly going to be smoke free? No, the FDA hasn't done the research. No, they haven't done any of those things. And yet e-cigarettes, you know, <coughs> there's, there's evidence both ways at this point in time. You know, 50 years ago, lead paint was decided that it was safe to do, and look at what we know today. And so I would just caution, and I would hope that anyone <coughs> who considers patronizing an establishment that allows e-cigarette smoking understands it's just the same as being around secondhand smoke. And that is why I vote no, because it's turning back the clock on a decision we made several years ago to improve health and to make public places smoke free. Thank you. Please note that Councilwoman Holton is a no. Um, this bill moves to third reader. 
City Council Bill 14-372, plastic bag surcharge, ordinance for the purpose of imposing a surcharge on certain bags provided by dealers to customers, defining certain terms, providing for the collection and remittance of the surcharge, requiring certain reports, prohibiting certain conduct, imposing certain civil and criminal penalties, providing for a special effective date, and generally relating to a surcharge on plastic bags. Mr. Canales, Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, we had a, a chance to speak about this bill uh, at length a, a little while ago. Uh, this bill was heard on um, November the 5th. It had been previously up on May 13th uh, of this year. Um, this bill was heard in um, early version of a 10 cent surcharge, Councilman Scott, earlier in the term, um, and has been heard uh, numerous times over the last number of years, but it's been heard twice this year, I mean this term. Uh, during the hearings during this term, uh, we've heard that it should be uh, a 10 cent fee, a 25 cent fee, a 5 cent fee, that it should be on paper bags, it should be on plastic bags. We should have it, we shouldn't have it, the bags should be banned altogether. We heard that again this past time when we had the hearing uh, just recently on November 5th. We should have it on paper and plastic. It should be five cents. They should be banned. Um, the committee has, um, has reviewed all that and we have one set of amendments on the member's desk and those are the committee amendments. And they are two, well, the first amendment is a technical amendment and that is um, there was a typographical error which referred to the subtitle as subtitle 29, it should be subtitle 30. And the second amendment, uh, it was supposed it was effective January 1 and we moved it to April 1 to reflect the fact that the hearing moved from May to, um, to uh, November. So we would move the committee amendments at this time. Second by Councilman um, Kern, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Spector. I haven't moved the other amendment yet. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. I just would like to speak to my concern that somehow or other the council has morphed this from a horse to a cow. We were always talking and it was voted on and it was lobbied as a fee for plastic bags. Yesterday, uh, I noticed that instead of a fee for plastic bags, the uh, action of the committee was going to be to ban plastic bags altogether. I shared my uh, visit on Saturday with the president and all the members. There was an international conference on harbors. I attended that. And the, aside from all the other information, the data said that the tonnage of trash in our inner harbor was generated by plastic bottles and cigarette debris. Nothing about plastic bags. And I didn't understand, at lunch I asked, what was the situation that we were going to be voting on at five o'clock today, and I was told, come to the press conference at 4.30. I was really left understanding if there is going to be a different position on plastic bags voted on at five o'clock from what the public knew as imposing a fee, then at least, at least give the public an opportunity to speak to the fact that it will now ban plastic bags, put a very, very expensive and environmentally negative influence in Baltimore City because paper bags cost more. Paper bags are not as utilitarian as, si as plastic bags are. Let the public speak to it. I am, I am so concerned that we're going to operate in a vacuum and the public will not know what has changed here from the hearing on Wednesday the 5th and what we're voting on tonight the 10th. If you are going to make such a big change as from a fee to a ban, change the whole issue, at least let the public speak. Do not do this. Do not do this to the people who live here and the people who make a living here. It's just patently wrong. I don't, I don't know what else to do except express 
the, uh, the opinion of almost everybody that I've spoken to, at least put it back in committee, let it be discussed whether it has merit or not, over the fee. Chairman Gnaz, Councilman Kraft. Thank you. Mr. President, there is an amendment to be offered from the President, if we could have that distributed at this time. It is an amendment um, entitled by President Young. It's um, four pages. It was just distributed by Liam. It's being distributed right now. And as I stated earlier uh, this afternoon, uh, <clears throat> During our hearings, uh, we have had uh, many requests, not just to impose the fee, but in, in, in alterna to alternatively ban the bags. Um, as a result of those discussions and a result of many other efforts that have been taking place over this time, and as I stated earlier, nations around the world have simply banned these bags. Um, a few of our states have banned them. Many, many more nations and cities have imposed fees on those who have elected to use the bags, and that's how the bag bill was originally written. Um, folks have reacted strongly to the entire idea of paying another fee, but we have continually insisted um, for 10 long years that our concerns and our efforts have not been about the money, they have been about the bags. Uh, we have a unique opportunity to be able to do that thing now that we originally set out to do. Um, we have amendments here sponsored by the President and uh, I would move the amendments at this time. Second by Councilman Henry, all those in favor say aye. All opposed, nay. nay. Please, Chair, recognize Councilwoman Smith. May I request, Mr. President, because you've authored them, you walked through them because we're not obviously going to have a hearing. Can you please explain these amendments? Chairman Kraft, explain the amendments, please. It's, it's to ban plastic bags. That's as simple as I can put it. And it took 10 amendments to do that? It already done passed. Um, Chair, recognize Councilman Kraft. Move the bill favorably as amended. All those in second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed nay. The motion carries. Please note that Councilman um, Scott is a nay. Councilwoman Inspector is a nay. Um, you're, you're abstaining. This bill moves the third reader. City Council Bill 14 413, International Green Construction Code. Ordinance for the purpose of adopting the International Green Construction Code as part of the Building, Fire, and Related Codes Article of Baltimore City, subject to certain additions, deletions, amendments, and other modifications, providing for certain exceptions and alternatives, conforming, correcting, and clarifying related language, providing for the effect, construction, and effective date of this ordinance, and generally relating to the Building, Fire, and Related Codes for Baltimore City. Chair, Chair, Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we introduced this bill in June and announced the beginning of a series of work sessions and hearings on the bill. Uh, we met on this bill on August the 5th, August the 13th, September the 16th, October the 7th, November the 5th, um, met in groups um, small as 15, as high as about 30, working with this uh, bill. I'd like to thank in particular Miss Alice Kennedy and Miss Katie Byrne, Alice Kennedy from the Office of Sustainability and Katie Byrne from the uh, Department of Housing uh, for all of the hard work that they did on this bill in helping us write uh, this legislation. There are uh, amendments on the member's desk. I would move the amendments at this time. Second by Councilman Stokes. All those in favor of approving the amendment say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Any nays? 
The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Move the bill favorably as amended. Second by Councilman Stokes. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. Did I hear nay? The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Public Safety Committee. City Council Bill 14 443, Police Equipment, Audio, Video, Recording Devices. 14 443, Police. 14-0443, police equipment, audio, video, recording devices, ordinance for the purpose of requiring all police officers employed by the Baltimore City Police Department to be personally equipped with digital audio and video recording devices and allowing a phased implementation of this requirement during the first year following the effective date of this ordinance. Chair McDonald's Councilman Kraft. <laughs> Councilman Branch, correct. Mr. President. Uh, uh, Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Thank you so much, sir. On October the 18th, we heard this bill in committee. Uh, in fact, some of my colleagues and I, we visit uh, one of the municipalities in the state of Maryland to see how they actually use the, uh, the audiovisual body of cameras. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, recommend a favorable report. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of this bill being a favorable report, say aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Chair recognize Councilwoman, your nay. Please note uh, Councilwoman Spector as a nay. Chair recognize Councilwoman Spector. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. I appreciate the opportunity to explain that I am certainly in favor and I understand everybody wants to see our police officers uh, operate at maximum. It's just that from the letter I received from you that you questioned the Attorney General whether or not it was legal for the council to do this, and the Attorney General said they would not take this up, but they would generally agree with our city solicitor. Again, I, I, I speak, illegal is not a sick bird. It was told by our city solicitor and the Attorney General that this is not a legal action of the city council, and for that reason, I vote no. Chair recognize Councilwoman Clark. I, I would just like to rise to say that when it comes to legal opinions, they're a matter of opinion. We know that in this council, we appreciate the citizens backing us up by approving for us our own independent council. I sponsored Living Wage and got a law report that we didn't have the right to enact it citywide. Several years later, I introduced it again, and the solicitor's office said, we do have the power to enact it. It's a matter of opinion. But the opinion that counts right now is that our citizens need to know and our officers need to know that they are protected by real lifetime evidence of the enforcement of law in our city. And I think I appreciate the lead sponsors taking the lead in this issue. I think the citizens feel that it is a step in the right direction of restoring the balance we absolutely must achieve in order for our city to move forward, and I know we can. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President, and I'll be very brief. I just rise to be very short to say that I think that we all know at this point it doesn't matter who's going to get the credit for this. We're going to have body cameras on our police officers. So at this point, you know, it's pretty much a mute point to argue about back and forth about the law department and all that stuff. What we all have to do is we have to come together to do what the citizens want. And we all know that they want the cameras on the police officers. So at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilman um, Branch. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I give the mayor credit for bringing a police commissioner here to Baltimore City who was the architect of these cameras. What he's done in California, you have municipalities across the country that's picking up and running with the ball. This is not a request that I'm asking. And it is not about who gets the credit or who don't. 
I have 45,000 constituents in my district, and the majority of those constituents, when I meet them on the street, say they want these cameras. I am only merely a re representative for the people that I represent in my district. It is not my play to tell them what is best for them. They sent me here. I am just one, one of the representatives from each one of these districts who's hearing the calls from the people from our constituent. If the mayor questions the opinion of her commissioner, then that's something that she has to deal with. But today, I'm here to voice the opinion for the people in my district. It is not, I applaud the mayor. On her watch, she brought a, if it was uh, Commissioner Billfield, who didn't have the experience with the camera phones, I would be the first to say, you're 100% right, Mayor. We need a task. But we have the architect here. All the questions that the administration is getting to oppose this bill is coming from their commissioner. Their policy set place in California. So if the policy went bad, then it shouldn't be operated nowhere in this country. Nowhere in this country in this country. So I stand firm for the people who we support and who we have to talk to for once. Let's do something for what, what they want and start, instead of what, what we think is right. Thank you, Mr. President. It's been, it's been second. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carried this bill moves to third reader. Urban Affairs and Aging Committee. City Council Bill 14-0424, Urban Renewal Market Center Amendment, Ordinance for the Purpose of Amending the Urban Renewal Plan for Market Center to reauthorize the acquisition of properties within the project area, to clarify and correct certain language, to amend Appendix B to add a certain property, to revise an exhibit sheet to reflect a change in the plan, and to extend the life of the plan, waiving certain content and procedural requirements, making provisions of this ordinance severable, providing for the application of the ordinance in conjunction with certain other ordinances and providing for a special effective date. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> President. Uh, the committee heard this bill on October 30th, uh, 2014. There is a technical amendment on your desk. I move the amendment favorable. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of approving the amendment say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. The amendments are adopted. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you. I now move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. This motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Third reader to be held two meetings. City Council <coughs> Bill 14-0379, Plant Unit Development, Designation Remington Row. For the purpose of approving the application of Miller Square LLC, Miller's Square Retail LLC, and 211 West 28th Street LLC, their affiliates and assigns, who are either the developers, contract purchasers, potential owners, and or owner of the area consisting of the properties listed on Exhibit 1, attached hereto and made part of the ordinance, together with the adjoining roads, highways, alleys, right, right of ways, and other similar property, and to the properties designated a business plant unit development, approving the development plan submitted by the applicant and providing for a special effective date. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 14-0432, Food Service Facilities, mirroring state law for the purpose of redefining food service facility and mirror, to mirror state law, providing in accordance with state law for certain licensing provision, certain licensing exceptions, clarifying the basis for certain license application fees, defining and redefining certain terms, clarifying, correcting, and conforming related provisions, and generally relating to the regulation of food service facilities. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry, Specter, Middleton, Mosby, Holton, Costello, Branch, Stokes, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 14-0446, City Property, naming a portion of the Stony Run Walking Path to be the Adam D. Cocky Jr. Walking Path in Stony Run Park. For the purpose of naming a portion of the Stony Run Walking Path located in Stony Run Park to be the Adam D. Cocky Jr. Walking Path in Stony Run Park. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry, Specter, Milton, Mosby, Holton, Costello, Branch, Stokes, Clark. This bill is approved. Committee announcements. Chair recognizes Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the, the Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will conduct a hearing on Council Bill 
140436, official city slogan, Baltimore birthplace of the Star Spangled Banner, on Tuesday, November 18th, 2014, at 9.30 <coughs> a.m. here in the council chambers. The Land Use and Transportation Committee has a hearing scheduled for this Wednesday, November 12th at 1 p.m. on Council Bill 140428, a rezoning of a portion of 2051 South Hanover Street. That hearing is postponed. It will not happen on Wednesday. It is being rescheduled until Wednesday, December the 3rd, 2014 at 2 p.m. Once again, the land use hearing scheduled for this Wednesday at 1 p.m. is being postponed until Wednesday, December 3rd at 2 p.m. The Land Use and Transportation Committee will hear Council Bill 140439, Plan Unit Development and number, Amendment Number 1, Greektown Redevelopment, on Wednesday, December 3rd, 2014, at 1 o'clock p.m. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. The Housing and Community Development Committee will meet for a work session and voting session on City Council Bill 14-0361, Late Night Commercial Operations, Multiple Businesses, at 3 p.m. next Monday, November 17th. Uh, I'm announcing this for both the chambers and the current room uh, in case we have to be out of here uh, so that we can set up for the 5 o'clock council meeting. Thank you. Committee announcements. Committee announcement. Chair, recognize Councilman Stokes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have two announcements. Uh, the first is uh, taxation, finance, economic development on Wednesday, December 3rd, uh, 5 o'clock here in Chambers, televised hearing, uh, Bill number 14-0183R. Uh, it will be for the purpose of requesting Director of the Recreation and Parks and Finance to come before the City Council to discuss the implementation of the recommendations contained in the audit report by the Baltimore City Auditor dated April 9, 2014. Now, Mr. President, um, we want to hear the report from the auditor, but what they did wasn't actually an audit. It, it, it's called an audit, but no respectable person outside of any government city government particularly, would have signed off on what they did. There's no payroll system per se. Uh, there is uh, no financials. Uh, what we have is something unauditable. Um, but we are going to hear from uh, Recreation and Parks and Department of Finance and, and audits uh, here in chamber on Wednesday, December the 3rd at 5 p.m. Also, Mr. President, I want to re-announce uh, that there will be a legislative oversight hearing uh, on Monday, December 1st at 5 o'clock, also televised, on the procurement of consultant services for water and wastewater efficiency study, and also for the home serve warranting letters uh, that went to um, all of the residents of Baltimore City. We'll be hearing those two uh, matters on Monday, December 1st, 5 o'clock, here in Chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair Recognized Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. On Monday, December 8th, here in Council Chambers at 5 p.m., the Budget and Appropriations Committee will have a televised hearing for City Council Resolution 12-8R, quarterly budget briefings, for the purpose of calling on the Chief of Finance Department's Bureau of Budget and Management Research to brief the City Council on how, how the City's actual finances compared to its budgeted projections in a timely manner after the close of each quarter in the City's fiscal year. We will hear finances briefing will focus on fiscal year 2014 <coughs> closeout and projections pertaining to the first quarter of fiscal year 2015, July 1, 2014 through September 30, 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Committee announcements. Chair of Canada's Councilwoman Clark. Uh, excuse me. Mr. President, members of the Council, Education and Youth Committee will meet on Thursday, November 20th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon right here. Council Chambers, this is an informational um, hearing on the Baltimore Opportunity Schools report. Um, I think you'll find it very interesting, and I hope that uh, as many council persons as possible will attend. 
And on uh, Thursday, December 18th, 4 p.m., we will hold a hearing on Bill 13-130R, which is a resolution um, introduced by the President of the City Council promoting educational success through a continued partnership and oversight. In other words, let's bring the partners in and see if they're still partners and see the conditions under which that can go forward. Um, should be a very positive, useful effort. Thank you, Mr. President, for the introduction. And that's on the 18th of December. Thank you. Regular announcement, Chair recognize um, Councilman Costello. And you, Councilwoman. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. Uh, like many people in this room, I have people in my family that served. Growing up, uh, I had a grandfather who served in the Pacific as a sailor. And uh, my mother's father, my other grandfather, who jumped on D-Day, was captured by the Germans and spent 11 months in captivity. Uh, I think it's uh, stories like that. It was probably my favorite story growing up, hearing about that. And uh, it's things like that that should remind us of the need to reflect on the sacrifices of the brave men and women who have served us and reaffirm our commitment to taking care of veterans uh, throughout this country and especially in Baltimore City. Thank you. Chair of Council Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to uh, share with the listening audience that this Saturday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., the Baltimore City Delegations Education Subcommittee will be holding a public hearing with many of those interested in public education and what we do. It will be held at the University of Baltimore at uh, UB Learning Commons Building a town in their town hall meeting room. And I make that announcement because they are interested in the public. Those who are parents, concerned community about education in Baltimore City and our children and looking to bring together many stakeholders to hear their views and concerns before the beginning of the legislative session in Annapolis. Thank you. Thank you. Committee, I mean, regular announcements. Regular announcements, Chair, recognize Councilman Kern. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the gentleman from the freshman colleague from the 11th District, I want to thank you for pointing out that tomorrow is Veterans Day, where we that to celebrate a holiday and take off. Melvin Low city government. Up until about eight, nine years ago, Baltimore City didn't recognize Veterans Day, but an effort by several council people, including myself, uh, made the administration celebrate Veterans Day, not just for a holiday. And it's not just like the NFL yesterday said that salute uh, to service. It was a theme all through the NFL yesterday and all the football games. but. I find out over the years, whenever I find a gentleman wearing a uniform or newly was in the service in the World War, in Vietnam, uh, Korea, Afghan, and all the other wars that we've fought over the years, I've learned just to say thank you. Thank you for your service. And that's what tomorrow's all about when we say thank you to those who uh, served our country. Maybe some of them gave the supreme sacrifice, but. Um, it's good to know that Bomber City recognizes and says thank you to the many veterans that serve us and give us the freedom so we can stand here and be legislators. So celebrate tomorrow. Don't just take off a seat late. I'll be at the stage tomorrow after the parade. I don't do the parade anymore, but I do the stage. Um, and to honor our veterans and many of them are city employees. So to all the veterans, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Kern. Chair recognize Councilman Henry, then Councilman Scott. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I rise to ask uh, my colleague from the 5th District to excuse a small breach of councilmatic courtesy. I wish to ask for a moment of silence for one of her constituents, um, Malik Lively, uh, who uh, is a, um, a lifelong friend of my family. Uh, some people, uh, life, <coughs> people from Baltimore have uh, been yeah. around for a while, uh, especially if you were involved in the Civil Rights Movement, may remember uh, my father. father, Walter Lively, who was uh, um, a strong fighter for civil rights in Baltimore and who also passed away um, at the uh, disturbingly early age of, I believe Walter passed when he was about 34, 35. Like and um, so my father 
uh, was sort of a godfather to Malik growing up. Malik passed away last week um, at the still disturbingly early age of 47. And uh, so I would ask for a moment of silence from the council uh, in honor of his passing. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and colleagues, uh, two Sundays ago, myself along with our colleagues from the 7th and the 11th districts participated in the Baltimore City Youth Commission Stop the Violence Turkey Bowl. Also, Mr. Broadwater from The Sun uh, participated. It was a great event for us to interact with. Did he play? Yeah, he played. <laughs> he can play. I did burn him for a touchdown. I wasn't going to say that, but he's... And, and just so everyone knows, the three of them were on the losing team. I was on the winning team. Just so, just so, we, just so we get that out there. But yeah, it was at the Dewburns Arena in Councilman Crafts District, uh, which is a great thing. But it was a great event for the Youth Commission to put that together to have young people, adults, you know, us here as elected officials, the media interact, all for a great <coughs> cause because we know we have some issues around violence in our young people in our city. So I just wanted to applaud them. And, and lastly, I just want to congratulate the great Mervo High School for winning the Baltimore City Football Championship this past Friday as they were victorious over Emerson to the score of nine to eight. We know that most of the city was concerned about an exhibition game on Saturday, but the game for all the marbles was played <laughs> on Friday night at 3500 Hill and Road under the lights. So congratulations to the Mustangs. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilwoman Spector. Thank, thanks, Mr. President and members of the council. I just wanted, I know that we will want to wish speedy recovery to our colleague, Edward Reisinger, Vice President of the Council. I spoke with him over the weekend, and uh, he's hoping to feel a little better. I didn't think he would be here today, but I know that uh, he's in our thoughts, and we wish him a speedy recovery. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I want to, for a moment, of silence for Ray Holland, and um, I won't be able to join the Veterans Day Parade. I normally participate. Uh, one of my friends, his mother passed away, and her funeral's tomorrow. So I won't be able to be there. So Bobby, you said you'll be there, right? Right. You'll be at the uh, veterans. Yes, and if, if I may, Mr. President, just making a public announcement about the parade, just very briefly. The parade starts at 9 a.m. Um, at the Washington Monument, Charles and Center Streets, uh, and the parade will come south on Charles Street from the monument to the ceremonial stage, which at 10 a.m., the stage will be over here in the War Memorial Plaza. Um, should have nice weather, so please come down and, and say thank you to our vets. Thank you. Chair, recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, November 17, 2014, at 5 p.m. We'd like to have a moment of silence for Ray Holland, Malik Lively, and Jack Harris. Thank you, there have been.